Can you recall old Western movies? The heroes were exceedingly good and the villains wicked to the core. And their identities were obvious even to the dullest member of the audience. There was very little in between. The problem is that this does not reflect the world in which we live. Sometimes the heroes have the feet of clay and occasionally the bad guy can actually do something decent. This holds true in what we hear in our first reading. The background here is that the Israelites were exiled captives of the Babylonians. Now enter Persian King Cyrus, who is a pagan and non-believer. He defeated the Babylonians and now rules the region. God had long promised that he would bring back his people back to their homeland. Although one might consider Cyrus the last person to make it happen for God's purpose. God is, Cyrus is anointed for the job. The reading closed today, for the sake of my servant Jacob, and Israel my chosen, I call you by name, I sir you, name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. King Cyrus is seen as the instrument of God. He instituted a rather benign and tolerant rule by the standards of that age. Eventually, he would allow many of the Jewish exiles to return home to rebuild their nation and even provide help to rebuild the temple. God can and does use many different individuals and groups of people to accomplish his will. God's spirit can run what we consider an erratic path, coming to rest in some shocking places. Some of God's choices might make us uncomfortable, even outraged. We may be in profound disagreement with many of them on many things. God has in mind only the accomplishment of his plan for humanity and will use whatever means necessary. There have been many examples of vocations to the priesthood for people who had known the person's wayward lifestyle before never would have expected that that would happen. A few weeks ago, we heard in the reading from Isaiah, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. In today's gospel, the enemies of Jesus thought they really had Jesus in trouble this time. The gospel tells us that he was approached by Pharisees and Herodians. These groups were bitter enemies. Israel was under Roman rule, and the Herodians were totally loyal to Rome. They would have immediately accused Jesus of promoting civil rebellion and revolution if he said, don't pay the taxes. The Pharisees, on the other hand, held that God alone was their king and lord, and they viewed the paying of taxes to Rome as caving in to the Roman emperor Tiberius Caesar, a foreigner and a pagan. The hot issue was made worse by the fact that Rome's tax burden on the Jewish people was extremely heavy. The fact that they could produce one coin gave evidence of that. Like it or not, they participated in Rome's commerce and economy. Jesus' answer to their question is well known. Give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. All oh, the brilliant wisdom of our God. Jesus avoided getting caught in the trap. He reminded us that we have obligations to both God and civil authority. The gospel reminds us that we are members of God's kingdom and citizens in the country in which we live with obligations to both. As Christians, we are not only members of the church, but members of society. 
Tensions can exist between our loyalty to God and duty to our country, especially when political questions touch upon our faith and morality. Religion and politics do mix and overlap, which, which we can easily see in our cultural shift today. So crucial issues of conscience occasionally emerge, such as those over human life issues, <clears throat> from conception to natural death, the nature of marriage and gender. In these instances, we must put God's law first, even if it brings us in conflict with the state. And this month, we are especially called to respect life at all levels. Normally, conflicts of interest are rare, and loyalty to our country need not contradict our obedience to God. A good Christian, by keeping his thoughts on heaven while having his feet firmly planted on earth, can love country and be faithful to both. Our Christian life in the world should result in giving a certain tone to society. We are chosen to be the saving hands of Christ and are called to spread the good news in different ways and on different levels. We are living in an imperfect world and it highlights the need for Christian men and women in public life who are not afraid to express their allegiance to God in social and religious affairs. Our fresh vision points out spiritual values which others would fail to take into account. Our most important goal for all of us is to work out our salvation by giving to God the things that are God's, especially in our call to prayer and worship, our love for God and our neighbor, growth in our faith in different ways can bring greater clarity as to how we handle the many issues and situations in our journey of life. <clears throat> Coming up very shortly on the weekend of October 27th to 29th is the annual Catholic Charismatic Retreat at the Passionist Retreat Center in West, Hat in West Hartford. <clears throat> we invite you to find details about that to go to Dial Springfield's website for details. <clears throat> yes, all this lifetime effort to give God what is due is something we need to help keep uppermost in our minds. By remaining steadfast in our faith at home and in public life, we show that our reward is not to be sought in this world, St. Paul tells us, eye is not seen, ear is not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of what God has prepared for those who love him. God is merciful and forgiving and gracious. If at any time we have been neglectful in these matters, we can start now by coming before God at this Mass in faith and offering ourselves completely to him in union with Jesus Christ at the altar of sacrifice. The Mass is the greatest prayer we can offer to God in giving God what is God's. Jesus is truly with us in this Mass, body, soul, and divinity, in his sacred, in his sacred action as we enter into the mystical time of Calvary. We praise and thank God for the many blessings he bestows upon us and his many graces. Amen.